How's it going everyone? Hope you're doing well. Over the last few videos, we've been going through and reviewing a bunch of different tools that we can use to create and share our web components. We've looked at lit HTML, lit element, we've looked at angular elements, we've looked at Svelte, Bit, and Stencil.js. And I wanted to spend some time just kind of summing up my thoughts so far, looking at the state of web components overall, right now and in the near future, and share some things that I've learned from others as well in the last few weeks, just so that we have a more rounded idea of whether to use this technology, when to use this technology, and what tools we have available when we do decide to use it. So to start with browser compatibility, just summing up everything that we have learned over the last few videos, browser compatibility is okay. It's getting better. It's a lot better than it was when I first reviewed web components back in 2017. If we look at the custom elements v1 spec, about 73% of browsers support this in some capacity. It's definitely not ideal, but it's getting better. And the cool thing is that now we have tooling available that provides polyfills for us so that we can use the different aspects of web components in older browsers, browsers like IE11 and Edge. In particular, Stencil really goes above and beyond to provide polyfills that really bridge the gap with these browsers and allow us to create components that work across the web ecosystem. I think this is really important because one of the strengths I think web components really have is their ability to bring interoperability across different frameworks. It's also really useful to create a standardized design system that you can use across your projects because it brings conformity and branding. I had a lot of fun creating this series so far and looking at these different tools. I especially love messing with Stencil and Svelte. I really think they're both onto something. The experience in using the technologies, the fun that I had in development, it was really refreshing and it was a it was a break away from the popular frameworks that I've been using so much recently. Stencil I found to be well thought through and really usable and they've clearly focused a lot on the developer experience and that definitely shows. Everything seems to work out of the box, everything is nice and organized, the tool is really opinionated in the directory structure and the way that you do things and it was laid out really nicely and made it really easy for me to create my progress bar component. Svelte is insanely robust, there was so much to it. I barely even scraped the surface when I was looking at it. I'm really, really looking forward to diving deeper into Svelte and seeing what it has to offer. I've been reading a lot more about it. It clearly is picking up a lot of popularity recently. Uh, there was a bunch of things that I didn't even notice about it because I didn't go really in depth into the documentation of the tutorial. Things like accessibility and reactivity, I barely even touched on. So I'm looking forward to breaking into that in a later series. I've been seeing a lot of hype recently about technologies like lit HTML, which are making developers think more and more about their tooling choices. We're so used to just throwing up like a Create React project for, for every single thing that we do, no matter the size. And technologies like lit HTML allow us to create smaller, more optimized projects faster. And that's really cool to see as well. My review of Angular Elements was, I mean, it's great. I really like that the Angular team is showing intent in interoperability and creating standardized components. And I do love that it gives Angular developers that are really tied into the framework an opportunity to break out and create more reusable components. But there was just something about it that just seems half-baked. I think that definitely it's got a little ways to go, but I'm really looking forward to seeing what they'll do with it. I also loved the review of Bit. I really want to use this more and more in a project and really get to know it more. This is one thing that I've definitely struggled with in the past is how to share these components that I create across teams, across projects and all of that. And this is a really, really nice way to do that. I think for too long now, there's been very little competition for NPM when it comes to sharing these type of libraries and projects and components. And it's really refreshing to see that there are services dedicated to web components. I love the social aspect of it and being able to publicly share components as well. I'm sure there's a wealth of value in this service that I haven't even explored. 
So one thing I did recently was I asked other people's opinions on the r slash javascript subreddit and started a really interesting, really polarizing discussion. So what I asked is for other people's opinions on web components uh, and their experiences in using them for their different projects, maybe side projects, maybe at work. I'm gonna link this discussion down below and I'd love to continue it. I'd love for you guys to put in your thoughts and experiences as well and carry this conversation on. After looking through people's responses, I think the general opinion is that encapsulation is great. People like that web components are fast and they have low overhead. And for a lot of people, it's great and refreshing to break out of the standard frameworks that they're so used to using. There is a general consensus on the downsides of web components though, especially the lack of concrete standardization across browsers and that browser compatibility thing really, really plays into people's decisions when, they, when they're thinking about whether to use this technology. Overall, people are saying that although web components and the tools that we have available to us to create web components aren't a replacement to the frameworks that we have available, they're really nice because they work well together with these frameworks and allow us to work across multiple frameworks. Overall, it seems like the popularity of web components and this type of technology is definitely increasing and I'm sure that will continue through 2020 and beyond as these tools become more mature, as the different specs become more standardized and more accessible in different browsers. The tooling is definitely one of the most important aspects of this technology. They're really helping in modernizing web components and bringing in new features and concepts while still allowing us to optimize and create components in a future-proof way. The code that we write now, we know isn't going to have to change drastically as the specs become standardized because these compilers will just optimize our code for those new specs. I'm really interested in what you guys think. So I want you guys to comment down below your thoughts and experiences with this technology. Do you think there's a advantage to using web components over using React, Vue, Angular? Have you used them in your projects? Have you used them alongside these different frameworks? What were your experiences? Tell me everything. I'm gonna continue looking through these different technologies. My next series is gonna be on Stencil.js. I'm really taking a deep dive into that technology. And after that, I'm gonna be looking at Svelte. I think that those two tools are gonna to be really important for the future of web components and custom elements in general. And so like this video, if you found the information useful, subscribe so that you don't miss any future videos. And I'll see you in the next one.